Sally Ann Hodson contracted coronavirus. Her family was told there was only a 20% chance she would survive. Goodness me, imagine hearing that about your loved one. Against the odds, though, she was clapped out of hospital after spending five weeks in an induced coma. And doctors have called her a walking miracle. Well, finding spirit clearly runs in the family because Sally Ann also happens to be the sister of another... Well, one of my personal heroes, actually, when I was young, the late England cricket captain, Tony Gregg. And Sally Ann and her husband, Philip, join us now, along with her brother, Ian Gregg, who joins us from Brisbane. Uh, and Davina Corrigan-Taylor and Emily Donaghy, who looked after Sally Ann, join us from Pinderfields Hospital in Wakefield. So welcome wow. to all of you. <laughs> um, Sally Ann, let me start with you, obviously. You know, you were really at death's door and yet here you are, back at life's door. What does it feel like? Yes, good morning. Uh, I have to say that I didn't suffer much during the induced coma. I don't remember a lot. But I'm here by the, by the grace of God and by the one, most marvellous treatment I received at Pinderfields. Uh, the prayers, the love and support. I'm here, I've survived. And I'm hugely humbled. You know, Sally Ann, I, when I was 10 years old, I went to my first test match at Lords. Lillian mm. Thompson for the Australians, an Ashes game. Uh, coming, in, coming in to bowl at your brother, Tony. He was England captain. I used to wear my collar up like, like he did. And he took them on. He scored 96. I'll never forget it. My first day of test cricket. He was swashbuckling, indomitable, and he wasn't going to be taken down by the Aussies. And when I heard your story, I thought, yeah, that's a Greg. <laughs> you did to coronavirus what he did to the Aussies. Well, I have to say, I was there too, Piers. Oh, you I'm were? Sure <laughs> <beat>. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, yeah. Sally Ann, yeah. it's great to see you. And, and I'm sure no one can be more grateful than your husband, Philip. I mean, when you're told that your wife has such a poor chance of surviving, that must be almost soul destroying for you. 20% chance of surviving she was given. Yes, it wasn't a great period, but uh, it's quite interesting, isn't it, when your life goes in front of you and you're faced with those sort of odds. And for the first three, four weeks, you sort of think about yourself. And that's terrible. And then after a while, you realise it's not about yourself, it's about Sally, missing her grandchildren, missing the future. And uh, the only salvation was the garden, really. I was in the garden every day, and every now and again you burst into tears, and... Every now and again, you coped with it. And what was marvellous was in a morning, you know, I rang the um, ICU. The nurses were unflappable. The nurses would talk to you. And then in the evening, my boys from London would ring. And again, the same response. The nurses were absolutely fantastic at keeping us going, positive, and I can't thank them enough, not only for those conversations, but obviously what they did. Well, shall, uh, we, talk to, shall we talk to two of those nurses? Now, we have ward sister Davina Corrigan-Taylor and uh, um, Emily Donaghy. It's great to see you both. Um, Sally Ann and Philip, what would you like to say to them? Uh, what I'd like to say to all the nurses, Davina and Emily, I couldn't name them all. Uh, I left hospital with the most profound feeling of humility. I was nursed back to health by many, many people, but I saw the human side of nursing. And I will, I will never be eloquent enough to tell you how they wrapped me in a warm blanket of security mm -hmm. and saw me through the hardest times. Not, not a catering lady, not a cleaner passed by my bed when I had a breakdown one Sunday without touching me and saying, you'll be fine. But I saw the human side, the cost of these nurses who go home after a night shift have children, they have to sleep, you know, husband's been looking after the kids. It's been a dire time for them. And they arrive back at work the next day, calm, loving, kind, just beyond my comprehension. And I owe them such a debt of gratitude. My words aren't enough to, expect, to express to Davina and the rest just how humbled I am by them all. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Davina and Emily. It's, it was a pleasure to look after Sally, wasn't it, Emily? Yeah. Uh, give emotional support, help with the rehabilitation. She's a lovely lady. And as she says, it has been a dire time for you. 
You know, too many lives have been lost in, that, in the pandemic. You have all been working flat out to save lives, to, to do what you can um, as you struggle to find treatments and, and we wait for a vaccine. What sort of toll has it taken on you as, as staff members? It, it was a very stressful time, very emotional. Um, you're turning into work, it's, it's the unknown, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, loads of people we did, we did lose. But we got Sally home, which we're very thankful for. Yeah. Um, Emily's stepped up from university uh, to help on the ward. She's a credit to university and she will be a band five on our uh, respiratory ward when she qualifies. Brilliant. Well, let's bring in Ian Gregg over in Brisbane. Ian, you know, you lost your brother when uh, he was 66 and here was your sister, the same age, 66. Um, you must have been worried sick over there. Absolutely, and I can well recall talking to my other sister in South Africa, Molly, and saying, you know, a few years ago there were six of us and we, here we have the chance of only there being two of us left. It was, uh, it was too scary for words. But it was very frustrating at the same time because, you know, as Philip mentioned, he, uh, he got his reports uh, sort of late morning, midday. If the, Obviously, if the ward was busy, it was a bit later. And with the time difference, you know, we were ready to... You know, go to sleep, and so there were there were some nights where unfortunately we didn't know what was what was quite happening. But uh, thank you to those wonderful nurses and the staff for uh, for bringing her back to us. Sally Ann, um, that number sixty six. You know, Tony was sixty six when he sadly died from lung cancer. You you're sixty six, and Philip, your husband, he was away from you for sixty six days. It's yeah, a weird exactly. coincidence. I don't think it was, we recounted, Piers. I thought it was 66, but I think it was 50. 55. Yeah, oh, okay. 55. So let's, let's take <laughs> away... Quite it's not quite as bad as we thought, then, the coincidence. <laughs> let's take away that omen very, very quickly. Yeah. yeah um, I, I, I mean, Sally, I, we always ask this question of people who, who come through this, and you've been particularly through a particularly long and torturous... Um, survival path with coronavirus. We always ask, what's the thing that you most wanted to do when you got home? Uh, I just wanted to be with my family peers. Um, I, the first thing I wanted when I came out was a cup of tea, but I wasn't allowed that for 15 days. But I just want to be home, um, to be surrounded by the people I love. That is what I wanted. We're watching you. We're watching pictures, Sally Ann, of you coming out <laughs> in, a, in a wheelchair, being pushed, uh, and you look so happy. Oh. And Philip's with you, and you've That's had your first, first hug. The first hug. And, of course, one of the worst, cruelest aspects of coronavirus is you, you can't see your loved ones. Mm. It's worse for the ones, I guess, who are conscious and uh, worried, sick about you. But that moment you got your first hug again with Philip, what was that like for you? Well, I was sobbing. Um, and the boys were standing behind him, and I wasn't allowed to touch them. Oh. Philip, Philip, like me, is negative, um, but the boys had to keep their social distance with masks. And I was in bits. Ah, oh, Davina, uh, you know. I... He was in bits, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. Davina, you were pushing the wheelchair at first, weren't you, as, as she came oh, yeah. out and, and introduced her back to, uh, to Philip? 